So the day is in the midst of a year-long look at affordable housing in the region. What specifically do you think the legislature should do to help people who can't afford to buy a home or are struggling to rent an apartment? Well, first of all, thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you to the New London Day for having me in for this interview. I, I have a, a lot of experience in this area. I am a real estate closing attorney, and I've spent my whole career representing buyers and sellers in residential real estate closings, uh, with a particular emphasis on first-time buyers. Uh, so these could be new, new people getting jobs moving into the area. They could be young people trying to move out of their parents' homes. And there are many parents that would like them to do that. Um, but listen, it's been a frustrating time for first-time buyers in the last year, year and a half, maybe two years. And the biggest problem is the lack of housing stock. Uh, so, and they call that lack of inventory uh, in the trade. Uh, but, but things are turning. Uh, there was a Wall Street Journal article, I believe, yesterday that talked about how we are going to be facing uh, a big housing slowdown. And I think that's already been happening. So my hope is that mar the market forces, the free market, can return supply and demand uh, into balance uh, prices are definitely softening right now, and I've noticed that with my real estate closings. But we do have higher rates. Uh, the funny thing is, Elizabeth, uh, there's such a pent-up demand for people that want to buy a home. I've represented buyers where they are in bidding wars, where there's 15 offers on a house. And uh, so there's a lot of, they've been facing a lot of rejection. I almost think despite the higher rates, and mortgage rates have almost doubled with our inflationary climate we're in, which is unfortunate. Uh, I still think there's going to be strong demand as long as there are houses that, that, that folks can buy. So we have some great programs in Connecticut, which, you know, always need to be reinforced and uh, reminded and, people, and have people be reminded about. Uh, we have Chaffa. We have um, DAP, which is a down payment assistance. I've closed hundreds and hundreds of Chaffa loans. Um, there's FHA. But actually, a program that I think is a really good fit for the 20th Senatorial District um, it definitely pertains to veterans because we have so many veterans in the 20th district. I am a strong supporter of, of our veterans, and they know that because I've been to every VFW and a Legion uh, event I, I can get to in the last uh, several months. Um, the VA mortgage loan is 0% down, so it's 100% it's financing. And that is just a great, very attractive program for our veterans. Uh, I've been endorsed by the Connecticut Realtors, uh, and I think Realtors play a, v a vital role in, in the real estate closing process, and they know I will fight against increases in, in taxes that affect real estate closing, such as the outrageous uh, real estate conveyance taxes, both state and local, and recording fees, which keep getting raised all the time. My Democrat friends seem to look at real estate closings as a target for additional revenue. I will fight against that because those costs and expenses make home ownership uh, more uh, higher and make uh, and, and, and definitely affect affordable housing. Um, I would be willing to look at incentives for housing. Uh, if you look at the private sector, why not think about uh, tax incentives to our largest employers, such as General Dynamics, which owns uh, electric boat across the, the water here. Uh, and uh, Millstone, Orsted, uh, those incentives can be used to provide some housing assistance to their new employees. How about our towns? We usually punish the town. The state likes to punish towns, and they like to slam towns with unfunded mandates, which increases our real estate property taxes. Why not incent the towns to get them to lean in a little bit about improving some affordable housing? I still believe in local control, however. We have eight towns in the district and it's really, I think, the residents of each town, their elected officials, their boards and commissions, these, these people are usually up for election every two years, so they're held accountable. Um, they should be having a big voice in the housing policy of each individual town. So uh, affordable housing is certainly a challenge. Uh, we have a growing workforce in the region, which, which is a good thing. But I think it's a challenge we can meet with some foresight, some creativity, and maybe a little help uh, from the free market. Okay. 
Connecticut recently enacted a law designed to provide safeguards against lawsuits for out-of-state patients seeking abortions in Connecticut and any provider who helps them. Do you support efforts to make Connecticut such a safe haven? Well, let me just start with, um, with this. Despite what you may hear from my opponent, I am a pro-choice candidate. I am a husband and a father of four adult daughters, so we're pretty much in unison on this issue in the family. We, you know, we're pro-choice. Women in Connecticut already are afforded the strongest protections for women's rights, probably in the nation. I believe your question speaks to the recently enacted legislation, uh, which Senator Formico, Senator Formico voted in favor of, uh, and that's uh, legislation having to do with a uh, scope of practice, I believe, and protection for clinicians. Uh, I wasn't there. Uh, for the debate, of course, but from what I have read and understand, I, I believe that's legislation I would have supported also. Okay. The state's surplus has grown to over $4 billion. Do you support the decision to use some of that to lower the state's pension debt, or do you think more should be returned to the taxpayer? Well, it's kind of a moving target, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, I, sometimes I hear a three billion dollar surplus. Sometimes I hear it's it's, it's as much as six billion dollars, uh, depending probably on what fiscal year they're combining or adding. It's the people's money, so um, maybe a combination of both. Uh, some responsible debt repayment seems to make sense to me, but mostly broad-based tax relief is what I would be in favor of. Uh, and I'm not talking about gimmicks. I'm, I'm not talking about a, a Ned Lamont $100 check in the mail. Uh, I'm talking about something that would be lasting. For instance, a 50 basis point reduction in the sales tax. And that's the most regressive tax we have out there um, that affects uh, those on the lowest, por the lowest part of the totem pole with income. Uh, if, we, if we move that sales tax from 6.35% down to 5.85%, so that's, fi that's 50 basis points, that, would, that, that savings would really add up over time. Uh, I would also want to look at fuel assistance to help people cover our sky-high home heating costs, uh, especially for those less fortunate. Uh, for something specific to our district, I would certainly be in favor of looking at a direct subsidy for our hard-hit service industry, such as you know restaurants, bars, and the like. Um, they play such a large part of our economy. They, they kept their restaurants open. They served us our, uh, uh, takeout food during the pandemic, and they, and they really have been hit hard. So uh, that, these are areas where you know, we can try to, try to push that, the people's money back down to where it's needed. How should Connecticut move forward to address climate change with regard to electric vehicles, wind power, and other clean energy strategies? A renewable energy is, is, is certainly an exciting new technology, and, and I believe uh, the energy future um, for us is bright. Uh, the 20th District, we're, we're, right, we're right in the middle of, of it all. Uh, so I envision a future uh, looking at things in an optimistic way where turbines are assembled right here in the district. I'm looking out at the state pier from the window. Um, wind farms are tied into the millstone infrastructure, the wind farms that are offshore, of course, uh, way offshore, uh, and possibly adding some small modular units at millstone, ultra modern and efficient. The net result is millstone, uh, which is right here in Waterford, uh, can become the carbon-free energy hub of New England. That sounds great, and, but first and foremost, it all has to be affordable, Elizabeth. People are facing enormous increases. I hear this a lot on the trail. Enormous increases in their in electric rates and in their home heating bills. Uh, the Millstone Power Purchase Agreement, which uh, Senator Formica championed uh, several years back, is now actually paying dividends uh, in terms of lowering costs. The problem is those lower costs are not flowing through to Eversource, uh, which I think is due to a convoluted convoluted is actually the word, a convoluted rate formula, uh, which has su been supported by my Democrat friends. So as Senator, I will fight hard to bring down electric rates and home heating costs. And as I already mentioned, I would be in favor of energy assistance for those that are most in need, and that can come from our huge budget surplus. 
do you think the 2020 election was conducted fairly and that Joe Biden won? And do you support early early voting and voting by mail initiatives? Uh, to your first question, yes, I have no doubt that Joe Biden is the president. So we'll get get through that. Uh, I'm glad that uh, early voting has been put on the ballot. Uh, so let's let the voters decide um, this fall. Uh, my wife, Barbara, was the town clerk of a very large town, town of Wallingford, for 13 years. And she, she commuted for uh, many, many years after we moved uh, to Old Saybrook. Um, and her, ela- her last election, and I, be- and I believe the last election for many town clerks was the 2020 presidential election. It was very challenging. Um, it, uh, it, it had all the pandemic challenges. It had no excuse, absentee ballots. It had all the drop boxes. And um, it, it, it certainly, um, in many ways, I would say I kind of lived it up close uh, through my wife. So I'd like to give a shout out to all the town clerk offices in our eight towns and all the registrar voters who uh, work so hard and for all they do to keep our uh, election system functioning. Uh, so to me, early voting or no excuse absentee ballots are essentially the same thing. And uh, I am certainly in favor of increasing voter participation. I'm a traditionalist. I don't think I've missed an election, pretty much an unblemished voting record for 40 plus years, uh, dating back to uh, being in college in the late 70s. Uh, I like I like voting on election day. I think there, you know, there's always potentially uh, late developments in a campaign and keeping your powder dry does make sense. You, you get you get 14 hours to vote. I've never really had a problem um, getting in and out of a polling place. But I understand people could be traveling. They could have physical uh, issues. They may just not be comfortable uh, voting in person. I get it. Um, we, we should provide a way for, for folks to vote. Ideally, it would be a system where just the voter, him or herself, can request the absentee ballot or early voting. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the term absentee ballot as one and the same. Uh, and, 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 and show some form of ID, just something, a water bill, anything. Uh, because absentee ballot irregularities are, are something that's very concerning. So safeguards are important. As you may have seen in the news uh, in the last week or so, there's been some ir- absentee ballot irregularities that have cropped up in Bridgeport and Stanford. So when there are these irregularities or there's, or there's some kind of voter fraud, that we all lose. We're all disenfranchised, and that's not good. So I have an open mind toward early voting, but let's see what happens uh, with the referendum uh, next month. All right. Now, um, in your district, the district that you hope to be representing is, is, is a diverse array of towns from smaller to larger. You've got New London, you've got Old Lyme, you've got Montville. How do you plan to balance the needs of the people in those different towns? I, 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 you hit it on the head. It's a it's a diverse district running from Old Saybrook all the way to to where we are here, the city of New London, which is urban, uh, all the shoreline towns in between, and then the beautiful communities of Salem and Montville and Basra, to the north. Uh, I've been out there, and there's been a lot of a lot of voter contact. I've been in all eight towns. I'm meeting the voters. I'm going to their doors. I'm going to events. I'm listening, and some of the issues are the same. Uh, pretty much everyone I talk to wants to, uh, they keep, they're concerned about public safety, and I always tell them that's one of my top priorities, to keep our streets safe. Um, I'm a big supporter of our men and women in blue, and I've been endorsed by the Fraternal Order of Police. Uh, we have a beautiful environment in the 20th Senatorial District. I will work hard to preserve that environment. Uh, we have to educate our kids. My daughter's a second grade teacher, one of my daughters. and. Um, and, and it's important to me. My, my mom was in the system for 30 years, and she's still drawing a pension. So, you know, we've got to protect our teachers' pensions. Uh, you know, taxes, real estate property taxes uh, are some of the highest in the nation. So I would always look to find a, or work, work hard to see if we can hold the line on real estate property taxes. Uh, I, I can partner with all the municipal CEOs. And I pretty much have met them all, and I, I know I can be a strong voice up in Hartford 
uh, and be an effective advocate for the middle class. Everyone that has talked to me pretty much knows I'm a centrist and I'm a middle of the road, common sense candidate. Uh, so yes, I think I can find that balance, Elizabeth. And uh, you know, each town has its own uh, uh, great characteristics. And my job will be to be, as a senator, helpful. Let each town run itself, be helpful, and go to Hartford and see if, if, if I can bring the resources home so that each of our towns can realize uh, their vision and their destiny.